It's a little bit of an unhealthy BYU team playing today without Spencer Johnson and Trevin Neal. One a start of the other uh, suspected rotation player this year. Dayton in a hurry. And that time just a little too, too chaotic. So Blakeney lost it. And we're coming back the other way. So here are the five on the floor for BYU. It's brought to you by the Atlantis Paradise Island. Stewart, Robinson, Ali, Atiki, George, and Hall. So Fuseni Traore, who is their inside force, is sitting on the bench next to Mark Pope. He picked up a foul, has been slightly ineffective in the first couple of minutes. And there's Spencer Johnson. He's one of their top scorers, suffered an injury in yesterday's game. He is out. And Spencer Johnson brings that attitude to the floor for the Cougars. Brings the toughness, a steady bucket when you need it. He makes the hard, tough plays defensively. They're really missing his presence. That pass was deflected out, so it stays here. Both teams have lost. BYU fell to USC and Butler over the last couple of days. Uh, both games decided by single digits. Dayton lost a one-point arduous battle on Wednesday to Wisconsin. Dropped yesterday's consolation game to NC State. So someone's trying to leave with a win. This is Dayton's five on the floor, also brought to you by the Atlantis. Deron Holmes, he is the stud in the middle. He goes for 13 a game. The reigning A-10 Rookie of the Year is the focal point for the Atlantic 10 favorites this year. As a sophomore, number 15 in white, number 7 in block shots. He averages 3.5 blocks per game. They just keep feeding him right over the top. He's going back to the free throw line. He's doing a nice job of the reverse seal once the ball comes back to the middle of the floor, then having the ability to throw over the top. He's got to reach over any of the BYU post players. Holmes has six of Dayton's first eight. He tormented almost everybody around the A-10 a year ago. Also an all-conference selection of the preseason heading into this year. Nice rim protector. He's he's tall, he's athletic. The Arizona native is very skilled. Dayton going to the high percentage shots. They're shooting 57% from the floor. They've attempted three threes, only three threes in the first six minutes. Meanwhile, BYU has gone nearly six minutes without a point. Holmes sits down. Mustafa Amsil into the game for the first time. Dallin Hall, he's the freshman. Hard dribble underneath. Recognizes he's got a close range look. And so that's the first bucket for a Cougars team. They take the lid off. Six minutes in. Understand the aggressive defense that Dayton is going to play. You got to be able to put it on the deck, get by one, make the help come. Kamara denies. He comes soaring in to spike that one down. Tamani Kamara tracks the ball, even though it's ahead. George doesn't see him, and Kamara times it perfectly. Get that stuff out of here. Dallin Hall on the attack. Draws the whistle, and he goes to the free throw line. How do you fight pressure with pressure? Dayton's going to be up on you and be very aggressive, defending you all over the floor. Then you got to put your head down and attack the basket. Paul in his freshman season. Scoring a couple of points off the bench. Uh, he is not your average freshman. 
He's 20 years old. He is someone who has already done his mission trip at BYU. So no basketball, essentially, for two years. And working his way back. Missed them both. And so Dayton has possession up by eight. Malachi Smith a little uh, sped up. This time he's bailed out by a whistle. Interesting watch in Dayton as they are continuing to push in transition. And part of this is the conditioning. They've had players that have been out because of injuries and not having a full roster, not being able to go full five on five, get up and down. There's a difference in conditioning, whether you do you know, running, treadmill versus Game, game speed, game conditioning, and they're still working on that. Smith to Kamara, into the paint, a crowded lane. This rebound's ripped away by Hall. Gideon George lost it. And he is frustrated, as is a lot of the BYU players. they got to tighten it up a little bit here. Already five turnovers and six missed shots. BYU can't get sped up. Understanding the tenacious defense that Dayton is bringing, but still play composed. Play your game. Very methodical. Think things through. Pass fake to make a fake. Backdoor cuts can be there. Dayton breaks the pressure. With Holmes on the bench. Elvis initiates the offense on the seal. Picks up the dribble, flicks it back out to Sheriff Jumps. On um, seal, noted marksman, short. Well, he and Sheriff Jumps are the two three-point shooters, the specialists for Anthony Grant. I like the energy that um seal brings in off the bench, but... There's a rim run. Ali Atiki. Ali Atiki on the rotation. Kamara passes up the open three, and Dayton can run its stuff. Yesterday, Dayton got out to an early lead, then had four turnovers in a row. They've got to make sure that they execute. They can't allow BYU to come right back at him after a, back, after a basket. Here's George. 18-footer is pure. Dayton, 5 of 10 from the field to start. BYU has its first two makes. They're 2 of 9. Here's Kobe Elvis. Collects, bounces it to Kamara. Get that out of here. Richie Saunders on the rejection. But then Sheriff jumps. He's letting Stewart know that he's got some range. That's the freshman from Mongolia. Deflects the pass. BYU ball when we return. It is all Dayton ahead by nine. Nine minutes in. Go. I love me you some might Purdue Pete. You might have swapped Purdue Pete out. No way, Purdue Pete. Was okay, so it's a side. It's just the here the in the Bahamas. Act. Just current. <laughs> Rudy Williams, 4-3. He's the fifth-year senior from Ontario, transferred in from Coastal Carolina his last year, spent in Provo, and he's going to run Mark Pope's offense. Elvis is now open, and there's the answer. Elvis needs to get going. Struggled from shooting a little bit yesterday. But Rudy Williams, if the BYU Cougars can get him going, 37% of his shots taken are from the three-point line. Waterman driving kick. That's out of bounds, and a couple of his teammates saying just shoot that one. As Waterman was I what, would six feet out. I would agree with them. As well as Waterman shoots the ball, 
He can see it. Let it go. Holmes back on the floor for Dayton. This is Blakeney with an aggressive tack. Nice assertive move by the junior from Baltimore. With Fuseni Traore on the bench still. Atiki Ali Atiki is the focal point in the paint for BYU. His layup is off the mark. Elvis, no look feed. This is Holmes, draws the contact. That's the first on the Tanzanian. And Deron Holmes is heading to the free throw line. Anthony Grant had to ask his team to push in transition. Got to block out, rebound, then be ready to run and really get those, those touches in the paint. That has been a priority so far in this first half. Boy, really nice start for Holmes. Nine points. He is three of three for the field and three of three at the line, plus a few rebounds as well. He was held in check against Wisconsin, 17 yesterday against NC State. That were those were both losses, though. Dayton by 13. Taking high percentage shots. Yeah. Dayton able to play their game. Rebound and run and get a bite of the paint. Holmes again. Underneath. Bounces it to Elvis. He saves it. Right back to the big man. Double goes away. Holmes working in. Blocked by Treore. 12 to shoot. Smith flips it up. That's a foul here on BYU. That's the first on Trey Stewart. And so that'll give the Flyers a new 20-second shot clock. Holmes has really done work on the glass. He's got a quickness with that second jump, not giving up on the boards. Treore knocked it free. So now we just move the inbounder. Malachi Smith over here. Right in front of Danny Ainge, the Utah Jazz general manager. He's seen some talented guards <laughs> this weekend down here in this tournament. Yeah. Scouting his alma mater as well, BYU. Obseo buries it. That one looked pure from the start. Mustafa Amsil always makes things happen when he comes in. Number 22. How about Sheriff jumps? Sharon jumps with the block. You know, foul on that, right? That was just a deflection out of bounds. Stays here. Dayton is on a 10 nothing run. Here's Williams to Traore. Fires it to Waterman. They could use this one. No. Sharif jumps coming the other way. Nice feed up ahead to Amseal. Lays it up. Rebound down to Holmes. Dayton's controlling the glass. They're plus eight rebounding. Yeah, they've got the advantage of just about everything in this first half. Holmes already with 10 points. He's got five rebounds. Two of those on the offensive end. Three of those on the offensive end. So he's outscoring the Cougars. <laughs> he is. Really efficient shooting first half for the Flyers. Rising up top is Holmes. The rim is still rattling. Dayton's got to stay connected to Deron Holmes. Even away from the ball, you got to keep a hip on number 15. He can elevate. 
Williams jump stop into the paint. Here's Hall. That one's offline. And Waterman may get whistle for the over the back. Yeah, there was contact. Kamara draws the personal. Goodness, it is a 13-0 date. He's that's that's the best mascot here. Now we thought you might do a dance or two with bounce. You keep trying to set that up. You're trying to tee it up to get me out there. We still have another I, I, half. I see, listen, I'm I not going to say it won't happen. Yeah. I mean, I, I see Bounce and I see you. I see just two talents that are just waiting to join forces. The choreography would be out of this world. Well, when I, I danced think. earlier, just in chair dancing, you wouldn't join me. All right. If I join you in chair dancing, okay, get you out there. Yeah, okay. We'll see what we can do. Okay. See, I'm willing to make a deal. BYU in a matchup zone right now. Rudy Williams on the attack, and that one was flicked out. Holmes says he didn't touch it. However, it's BYU basketball. Mark Pope's team is off to a ragged start. Four of 16 from the field. They've turned it over six times. But remember, playing without a couple of key starters and rotation players. No Spencer Johnson. So you lose 11 points a game, plus Trevin Neal is still out with that lower body injury. Rudy Williams caught Smith in the jaw. I mean, nobody was looking. He went to the floor. He's come up. He's now down the floor. Shadrachan has to look for his shot. He's thinking pass first. Um, seal the high archer, rebounded by Williams. A BYU team that is looking for its next offensive playmaker. Holmes with another rejection. Alex Barcelo, the stud of last year's team, has graduated and moved on, as has to John Lucas. So three starters off of last year's 24 win team are gone. A couple of other significant reserves transferred. A little more than half of the scoring is gone. And there you go 12 newcomers, seven freshmen, five transfers. Mark Pope is trying to contend for another WCC title, which it likely should. Six games into the season, and he's still figuring out his players, his rotations. That's why a week in the Bahamas like this can be so significant. It takes time to build that chemistry, also to establish what the roles are. Bounce pass into the corner. Well, you wanted him to look for his shot. Now I know why. <laughs> Boy, this is just all Dayton. It is a barrage right now. It's a 15-0 run. Home post 18. Kamara flies in. Yeah, timeout BYU. You could sense that one coming. This is all Dayton right now. Outplaying and overwhelming the Cougars. 6-0-1 to go in the first. This is the seventh place game. That means both of these teams have lost over the last two days. So somebody's trying to leave the island with a win. Right now it looks like Dayton is in a position to do so. Still the first half, but BYU has had nothing to really hang its hat on, or write home about, whatever the phrase you want to use. It's a Thanks. foul inside on Kamara. What's going wrong? And, well, Anthony Grant is not allowing his team to lose their focus. Even though they're up 32-9, to nine, he brought the full court pressure. He is still working with his team to get better. Not just to have a holiday trip and go on vacation. They have blown leads in this tournament before. So what do you do? You have your team stay focused on the defensive end, especially. The A-10 favorites that started the year inside the AP Top 25 poll. Trey Stewart drills a triple from the corner. That's just the fifth made still goal of the first half for BYU. Stewart, Robinson, Saunders. Jackson Robinson can come in off the bench. All threats from the perimeter. There is no lead that is safe. And all younger players off of Mark Pope's bench. Um, Seal's strong enough to gather that one. It's either a foul or a jump ball. And Larry Spalding is saying it's a foul on Dallin Hall. That's his second. 
Dayton in the bonus. So um, Seal, the Helsinki native. Um, Seal a little more reserved or under control today. He came in with a lot of electricity, high emotion, even got a technical called on him yesterday. That was a challenging second half for Dayton. NC State went on a 17 to 1 run at one point. They did what Dayton is doing to BYU yesterday. Now the Wolfpack, they can definitely frustrate you, especially those oh. three guards. And Darkel Joyner had a night. Jump ball, possession arrow favors Dayton. Yeah, Mark Pope is asking for a few more whistles. You think there's been some contact that's been uncalled for. That's a press breaker to Ron Holmes. That's 14 first half points for Dayton's signature stud in the middle. He just went tumbling. So now it's it's five on four. Ali Atiki scores, and now we're going to uh, blow the play dead. Holmes uh, has staggered to his feet. So he's headed towards the bench. Did he collide with Amsil? I think it was some friendly fire down low. Oh, he's going straight back to their designated locker room. Or a conference room in a sense. Everybody has their dedicated space outside of this ballroom. And he's clearly limping, favoring one leg so that's 14 points and a menace inside that heads back up the tunnel yeah you're right partner not just offensively but defensively of what Duran Holmes brings for the Dayton Flyers four minutes to go if there was a time to attack it's right now for BYU and that's a foul inside whistled against Ali Atiki that's his third Dayton I think you want one Hundred percent. This is one that maybe gets fought over every year. I think you need some seniority to uh, earn this trip. So Ainge's alma mater is down 20, and it has been ugly. Playing with two injured players. Dayton's bench wanted a foul on Treore after he and Sharp jumps went colliding. That's a huge block right off the side of the backboard by Zimmy Wokeji. The fortuitous bounce for BYU frees up Jackson Robinson for his first basket. And then Wokeji draws a foul inside. Well, the BYU fans... Wanted the foul called on the push off from Traore. It's not called, but then the rejection. Kick out. Jackson Robinson finds the three. And so Zimmy Wokeji with his first basket this week in the Bahamas. He's played three minutes in each of the first two games. That's it. Dayton is shooting 52% from the field. It's hit four triples. It's forced seven turnovers. It's just a sharper team right now. Traore could not gather it. Here comes Sharp Jumps, who's having a really fine afternoon. This is probably his best day or best half in the Bahamas. Um, Seal, who does he want to find? Malachi Smith into the paint. That just pops out, but he's got two free throws coming. Well, Dallin Hall in the paint. But Shara Jumps was wide open on that baseline corner. Smith could have found him. He got bailed out right there. Shara Jumps has had a fine first half. And so instead, Malachi Smith to the line. He, as well as Tamani Kamara, and Deron Holmes. They landed on the A-10 preseason first team. Speaking of Holmes, here he comes. And they are projected 
to finish atop the A-10 after bringing back its entire starting lineup from a season ago in which Dayton won 24 games and was the first team left out of the tournament field. The last few years, the committee always gives us the first four teams that were left out, which can be great insight but painful for four fan bases. Leading the team, field goal attempts. That was Elvis. Elvis has been very quiet. Kobe Ellis only has said, two field goal attempts so far. That's it. Smith for three. Um, seal had it knocked loose by Saunders. Good sleight of hand. Noah Waterman checks back in for the Cougars. 2.16 to go in the first half. Mark Pope wanted to bring some size on to the floor. Got a battle on the glass. They're out rebounded 23-14. That's a big disparity. Especially with Holmes inside. He's back. That pass to Sheriff jumps in rhythm jumper. Rebound down to Treore. So that's his fourth. He has sat on the bench for probably a few too uh, many minutes or more than he would have liked. Waterman up to Saunders. He was ready to catch in fire. So it's back to a 15-point game. BYU was down by as many as 23. It was a 32-9 score. The way BYU can shoot the three, they're never out of a ball game. That's now four triples by four different players. They did all they could to make that first game against USC interesting down the stretch. They created opportunities, just not able to knock down shots. And um, Seal with a foolish foul. That sends Waterman to the free throw line for a one and one. BYU moving the ball to find their... Plenty of postseason implications. Get you both on the ESPN app. The final 110 of this opening half. Stewart in the corner, left it way short. Saunders, oh, he was able to get his hands on it over sharp jumps, but then could not gather. BYU, though, looking for their three-point shots. You saw a lot of misdirection, pin downs, guards coming off that floppy action. Dayton has been so successful going inside. Deron Holmes. Stays on this end. Richie Saunders even pointed to Danny Ames to get some help. You saw it. <laughs> he was like, hey, hey, help man. me. Didn't you see it? I you got a witness. I think uh, Danny Ames, he's already been given the warning, you said earlier. I said, sorry, pal, I can't help you out on this one. Giveaway, 36 seconds left. Williams, a blur, high off the glass. Couldn't get the layup to fall, and instead he has two free throws. BYU continues to chip away and chip away despite not having Spencer Johnson. Other players have been able to step up. And it's taken a little bit of everybody not falling on the shoulders of any specific player. Only 22 points, but eight different players have scored for Mark Pope. Again, BYU found itself down by 23 in a really lopsided start to this one. But since that point, it's on a 14-5 to run, so it has really sliced into that deficit nicely. Kevin, Dave, Dave does have a field goal in what, four minutes? Yeah, 4-10. And their best shooter, best three-point shooter, Noah Waterman, he's yet to make it, but he's 0 for 1 from the floor. He get going as well. BYU can hang in there for this one. Yeah, this thing could tighten up. 
Well, credit the Cougars. They're back in that zone oh, again. Fight. A little one three one. George is at the top. I believe it's a, a tandem matchup at the top. You'll see George and Stewart interchange with their rotations in that top key area. Smith out to Elvis. Big three. It's pure. Kobe Elvis now with five. And that holds the 7 nothing BYU run. Saunders, one last heave at the horn. Was online, left it short. Well, BYU is maybe down 16. It was down 23 earlier, so it put some work in. Second game of four. We saw Wisconsin knock off USC in the third place game earlier today. That was a fantastic college basketball game in which Wisconsin won in the final minutes. Later on tonight, we got the championship out. It's Kansas and Tennessee right here. Our seventh place game. Both of these teams have lost twice. For BYU, it's lost a pair of games by single digits. Neither team wants to go home with three losses in as many days. It makes a long trip home if you go with the goose, hat, go, goose egg in the tournament. Yep. Here's Elvis on the pull-up. That's a nice jumper. Kobe Elvis, the junior. The transfer from DePaul. Second year now at Dayton. Elvis has been patient. He has it. Forced shot. Understanding the game plan was to go inside first, but number 24 in white, that is a player that can really add up some points with a quickness. So his name is Kobe Elvis, and he wears number 24. So, I mean, how many bad puns has he endured in his life? Come on, let me hear one for you, Kevin. What, what, what you got with Kobe, El Kobe Ellis? Well, at least he's not from Memphis. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta credit my uh, writer, your uh, husband. That's it. That one. So thanks for the thanks for the material on air. <laughs> There's a foul inside. Yeah, that's on George. Dayton by 16. Anthony Grant. And he's always uh, just continues to elevate expectations at his alma mater. Right before the pandemic shut everything down two and a half years ago, his Flyers were a 29 win team. They were on their way to a one seed in the NCAA tournament. That was the Obi Toppin year. They followed that up with a couple of really quality campaigns, trying to get back to the NCAA tournament this year. For the first time in five years. I believe the Flyers continue to play through Deron Holmes, but good things can happen. Right there, he got caught too far underneath the hoop. Well, the guards have got to keep the full spread. Spacing is going to be important for Holmes to be successful. Yeah, Dallin Hall knocks down the jumper. 13-point game all of a sudden. This is the closest BYU has been since the early goings of this game. Now the perimeter scoring that the Cougars can do. No lead is safe. And they're doing this without Spencer Johnson. Elvis, the leaner, rebound down to Treore. Johnson is out with the injury suffered yesterday. It's a thinner BYU rotation than expected for Mark Pope. But they are fighting as you would expect. Even without Johnson, there, Mark Pope has gone four deep on his bench. Noah Waterman started the game. Got Atiki Ali Atiki coming in. Richie Saunders, Trey Stewart. Dallin Hall has had to initiate the offense at time. Finds the big man, Treore, makes it an 11-point game. Just his second field goal comes at an opportune time. Anthony Grant calls the timeout. Hey, both of those are high-octane offenses.
Dayton running it stuff. Malachi Smith flips it up and in. He doesn't have to necessarily be a double-figure scorer this year for Anthony Grant. He's a playmaker. He can get to the rim effectively when he needs to, though. George, offensive rebound down to Traore. He is a tireless worker on the glass. Six That's points. Gideon George, sorry. Six points. Well, that was Gideon George. Yeah, six points for Gideon George. Traore can get going inside as well. Number 45 in blue. Holmes, a quicker first step. Traore, though, with that wide frame, cuts him off. So strong inside. Punched forward. This is going to be two. An easy stuff for Jackson Robinson. It's a single digit, uh, a deficit that's just single digits again. Dayton has allowed leads to slip away in all three games now here in the Bahamas. It's 23 point lead has all but evaporated. Sharif jumps, misses the floater. Knocks it free. Traore was grappling with the Mongolian as well. Out of bounds and last touch by the Flyers. Here we go. So who's going to go home with Neptune's uh, championship trite? It's going to be Kansas or Tennessee. It's a stretch. I was trying to make something work there. Dayton turns over BYU. The focus. Cougars. Go ahead, Carol. Focus back on the defense inside for Dayton as the Cougars were making their run. Anthony Grant said his team's got to turn things back up defensively. Oh, there's a lob to Kamara. That's going to get the job done. That's Kamara's first basket after halftime. The Cougars were once down. As many as 23 in the first half. It was a ragged start for BYU. But it's pushed back here nicely in the second half. That's a careless pass. It's the 10th turnover. And so moments ago before that Dayton bucket. They were the closest they've been to Dayton since the 10 and a half minute mark in the first. The lane got clogged. Ron, the home, Deron Holmes hasn't been able to get easy looks inside. Traore comes down with his sixth rebound. Williams slipped free to the rack. And running in transition, BYU, they're getting to their spots. Four out, leaving that lane open straight down the middle. Holmes sets the screen. This is Elvis into the paint, runs into the brick wall. Sharif jumps, passes up the three. Oh, an aggressive drive. And the Mongolian is headed to the free throw line. An assertive attack by the freshman. Damani Kamara gives him some props after the move. BYU running the floor. They spread wide. That leaves the middle of the lane right open for Rudy Williams. And then... We're gonna call it Mongolian Mike. Sarajans running it, coming back, attacking the basket. That's six eight from the perimeter. Take away his shot. He still has a tremendous move to the right. Well, we got to mix it up. His dad already claimed the Mongolian Shark nickname. His dad was a phenomenal player, and he was the first. First Asian to play with the Globetrotters. Doug Housechild, the SID, he's always got us covered with the factoids. Thank you, Doug. I believe Mike is the first Mongolian to get an athletic scholarship. Backdoor oh. cut, Saunders with the left hand. He beats the freshman. So it's a nine-point game. This one is tightening up, and it didn't look like it was... Headed in this direction at points in that first half. Blakeney with a beautiful spin and score. But here's what's happening for Dayton. As BYU making their run, Dayton's getting more and more aggressive on the perimeter. And when that happens, how do you fight pressure? With pressure. 
So with the backdoor cut, you want to watch Richie Saunders cut back door with so much pressure on the perimeter, and that's what allows him to be available for that wide open layup. And so BYU is now seven of nine from the floor in the second half. Dallin Hall into the paint. Holmes doesn't bite. Turns back over his left shoulder. Treore, uh, make it George. Dives in and starts mixing up with the Dayton Bigs. And he draws a foul. The defensive one-on-one -on -one matchup, though, is Deron Holmes is ending up on Dallin Hall, the point guard. Dallin is attacking size. And that is causing Kamara to come over and make a decision whether or not he rotates or not. If he stays, Dallin's going straight at Holmes. If he rotates over, then Traore was available down low. Two of two at the stripe for Gideon George. He averages about 12 per game. George today with just five. No Cougar is in double figures yet. Matter of fact, Williams is the closest man. He's got seven. Blakeney for three. Contested jumper out of bounds and BYU can close the gap a little further. They was having so much success of getting the ball inside on the season coming into today's game. They were shooting about 26% from three. You need to take the higher percentage shots. Saunders has been aggressive attacking the rim. Atiki Ali Atiki got his hand on it and once it slammed off the ground and bounced back up, it hit underneath the backboard. So the ball goes to Dayton. Elvis, um, Seal, Blakeney, Holmes, and Sharab jumps. The five on the floor for the Flyers. Still at the high post is a good option. You have an isolation then for Holmes. Oh, beautiful cut to the rim. Blakeney with the throwdown. Lead grows back to 11. Dayton putting the pressure on BYU. Blakeney can be a spark defensively for the Flyers. Saunders having his finest day of the tournament. When you're a man down, you've got to have somebody willing to step up. Richie Saunders in the absence of Spencer Johnson has done that today. Saunders had four threes heading into this one. He's got a pair. The double comes. Sharm jumps. Offline that time. And Saunders with the quick closeout. Timeout on the floor. Dayton's once 20. Why I'm just I just kind of listen to what you do and go along Look, with it. Look, I'm the visitor here. You just follow <laughs> along with the homies. I mean, you were in the presence of your idol this week. That was your you know, you were in the presence of your idol. Oh, absolutely. Bounce has definitely put on a show. The Well, so uh, Bahamian has, basketball, I suppose. Well, but so has the BYU Cougars. They keep hanging around. They come. They keep coming back. They get themselves behind, and then they make a run. Yeah, they were down by 23 earlier. Back within eight inside of 11 minutes. Then the offense got a little stagnant for Dayton. 
ball stays here. I think the, uh, the ovation you received from the crowd behind us was, it's like the loudest of the day when you came back. <laughs> they were just saying your this. your foray on the floor. Look, this woman's got courage to be out there and try to keep <laughs> up with that mascot. Malachi Smith. Big defensive possession by the Cougars. Malachi has to just fire it up with a shot clock draining. Anthony Crane can't be happy with the shots, the execution of their offense right now. They want to take a victory home. George for three. Five-point game. To have a bad offensive series and then come down, break down defensive, lack of defensive execution. That gives the opposing team, the Cougars, they've got confidence right now. They believe. They're defending hard. Holmes swings around Traore. Or make it Ali Atiki part of his whistle for the personal foul. After forcing Dayton into a bad shot, then continuing to attack, make the defense sink inside. That allows Gideon George to be ready outside, and he buries the three. Now it's Holmes at the line. Still in search of his first basket in the second half, or his first points. 65% at the strike. Now with 15, that leads all scorers today. And so here's BYU again. Without Spencer Johnson, Trevin Neal is still out. They've somehow managed to get back into this one, and not a single scorer yet is in double figures. Well, it's been a little bit of everybody for BYU to contribute. No one has tried to be the hero. Everyone has moved the basketball, just creating the best opportunities they could find. Six players with five or more points. Oh, Williams, that's a hoist. Smith up ahead. Holmes running the floor. Long stride. Second chance. There's a foul on the floor. They're waving the basket off. Sixth team foul on BYU. And the official says the foul is going to happen on the way up. So if the basket had gone in, it would have been, it doesn't count. But Deron Holmes will get two shots. He just hit one out of two previously. That was Williams' first. Dayton lost a tight one to Wisconsin on Wednesday. Tried to rally yesterday before its defeat to NC State. As you mentioned, it has had several larger leads, relatively speaking, in its first three or first two games, all three games, I should say. They're back up by seven. Now the pressure is always on you, the team that holds a 23-point lead at any point in a game. Kamara with another bump, uh, quite a ways away from the hoop. That's his fourth, so he's had two kind of foolish ones. In the second half, he goes to the bench. Well, the pressure's on Dayton because they have struggled offensively. Offensively for BYU, they've been able to manufacture points specifically in their runs. So if Dayton gets allows BYU back in the game, they maybe can get stops, but then can they get points? Can they score like that? Gideon George knocking down the three. Another one. The fifth-year senior has two in a span of a couple of minutes that are critical ones. Whoa, it's a four-point game again. Nine minutes to go. Dayton needs a spark. Smith on the pull-up. Holmes the rebound. Back out to Elvis. Sets the feet off the dribble. Back to Amseal. Amseal on the floor. That pass barely threaded through to him. And there's a personal foul, a, a, a whistle on Treore. Mark Pope is 
frustrated by the call. You gotta see that again too. Hustle plays to the floor. No, it's on Stewart. Pardon me. It's on Stewart. It's right at the end of the sequence there. So not on Treori. That's uh, Stewart's third. So a new 20 for Dayton. The A-10 favorites have had their 23-point lead whittled down to four. Holmes spins right into the double. Williams knocks it free. Holmes trying to stay strong. Holmes in for a bucket. That's exercising discipline on the part of Dayton. Anthony Grant wants the ball to go in the paint. Elvis passed up a three to drive and get the ball inside. You got to follow your head coach instruction. Blake nearly took the pass away from Stewart. Yeah, only two seconds here for BYU to get it across. Saunders to inbound. Williams and Hall in the backcourt. That's a tough one. Yeah, 10 second count. 10 second count. Ball back to date. Now, the shot clock actually re battling without Spencer Johnson today. Dylan Hall, the freshman, has come in and been a major impact for the Cougars. Dallin Hall has it back to a four-point game. Dayton running its stuff. BYU has done a better job defensively in this half. That's just another turnover. Careless pass. Deron Holmes is saying that it was tipped. Smith doing a lot of dribbling, but he's closing the gap. He's really causing traffic to be inside, making it more difficult to get the ball inside the home. Now, BYU could cut it back potentially to a two or a one point game here. Saunders, corner three, no. Gideon George. It's a big rebound for George inside, creating a second chance opportunity. Saunders passed up the three and drove instead. Williams kicks it out to Hall. George, head fake, got his man in the air. That's offline. Traore battling, tapped out by Dayton. And so BYU basketball with 7.06 to go. Kevin, remember on Wednesday, BYU and USC going head-to-head -head down the stretch. BYU kept creating opportunities for themselves, forcing turnovers, just not able to connect on the key buckets that they needed. Can they close this one out today? George in the corner, three in the air, missed everything. Elvis, he is a blur. Foul on the way going up, and he is grabbing his right knee. The ankle turn, he grabbed his knee, it could be anything. You just hope he's okay. In a four-point game. Critical free throws now as we get into the later stages of this one. So the five out there for Dayton now is Blakeney, Kamara, Smith, Holmes, and Umseal. Dallin Hall, who was whistled for that personal, he's got the ball. He's now playing with four fouls. Dayton's lead grows back to six. Dayton in a 1-2-2 two, two. matchup zone. Here's Hall. Buries a three. Three-point game. The Cougars back within one possession remarkably. After being down 23 in the first half. Dallin Hall has played major minutes. Big minutes for BYU. The freshman filling in in the absence. 
of Spencer Johnson. And against this zone, Dallin Hall at the top just spaces out and knocks down that three. This is the closest this one's been since we tipped off. BYU's never led. It was down 3 nothing right off the bat. Dayton has tightened up. Holmes spins into Traore. Shot clock violation. And they're discombobulated now on this end. Yesterday, Dayton lost its composure a little bit as the intensity picked up against NC State. They have got to really lock in mentally down the stretch for this last five and a half minutes. I mean, they have just about made up this 16-point deficit. Saunders was out of bounds. His heel hit the out-of-bounds line. 5.45 to go. Kate needs to use the shot clock, but be disciplined with the execution. You want to get unforced turnovers like ball screens or a travel. Get a good shot in this possession. Here's Kamara. Bumps into Gideon. Fouled by George. Two free throws coming for Kamara. Mark Pope doesn't like the call. However, it's the second on George. Mark Pope's got to get Dallin Hall back into this ball game. The good thing for BYU, if they're going to give up buckets, no time's coming off the clock. It'll be twos as opposed to threes. BYU can make threes from the perimeter. Two big ones for Kamara. Five-point game again. 5.24 to go. Seventh place battle. Two teams with a pair of losses the last two days in Nassau. Looking to go home with a win and some pride. Traore thinks about it instead. Back to Hall. He's been the offensive initiator often tonight for BYU. Hall's done a terrific job of running this offense. Into the paint, scoops it up, and through. Dallin Hall has 12. Holmes with position before BYU can get back and get set. Blakeney for three. That's short. BYU has a chance to tie this thing up. Richie Saunders has been great off the bench for BYU. They have had to find scoring from unlikely sources. Traore into a pair of Dayton Flyers. That's solid defense that time by Om Seal and Holmes who swarm them. Uh, There's a big rebound by Deron Holmes. Holmes looks a little fatigued. Foul on Robinson. 4.04 to go. That's the 10th team foul on BYU, so Om Seal has two free throws coming. Mark Pope subs Rudy Williams back in for Saunders. Dayton thin now at that point guard spot. Malachi Smith is going to have to run now with Kobe Ellis back in the locker room. Kobe Elvis. Yeah, he left a few minutes ago. After what looked like a, clearly a right knee injury. Started grabbing the knee immediately. Two big ones for Om Seal. It keeps the Dayton lead to a two-possession one.
Uh, Dallin Hall, the freshman. Now both point guards for BYU on the floor. Both he and Rudy Williams are threats from the three-point line. Robinson rises. Rebound to Kamara. Inside of four minutes. Holmes bumps his way in. Rebound to Hall. Hall does a nice job probing, getting inside the defense, then kick out. They got shooters. Here's Robinson. Buries it. It's a two-point game with 3.08 left. Timeout. Some increased minutes. BYU, once down 23, is within two. And here we go. Final three minutes of their last game here in Nassau. Dayton's been trying to get the ball inside, but the spacing has not been very good to go back inside to Holmes. Charm jumps back on the floor. He's got the ball. Back to Smith. Kamara, an aggressive take. Hands it off. It's swiped away by George. Kamara overpassed right there. He's going to the rim. He needs to go ahead and shoot the basketball. And Kamara has just fouled out. That could be a critical absence. Yeah, why not just lay it up? Yeah, he had already cleared Traore. It's a frustrating game for Kamara. And so Anthony Grant now is without Kamara and Kobe Elvis, who left a few minutes ago with an apparent right knee injury. And it did not look like he was coming back. Went straight to the locker room. BYU has never led. It's been playing from behind all afternoon. And Dallin Hall in the game. He also, he's got four fouls. And a Traore. He's got the smaller Smith on him. Robinson, extra pass. George, got it! BYU is ahead! Timeout, Dayton. They have climbed the insurmountable deficit. You know, I never saw a look of discouragement from BYU. As far down as they were, they just moved on to the next play. Sharif jumps. Beautiful cut right to the rack. The whole uh, Dayton bench wanted a and one call instead. Flyers take the lead. Each team with one timeout left. And Dayton can't foul. They just got to play solid defense right now. That's the fourth team foul. Second on shower of jumps. You got the foul disparity. BYU's been whistled nine times this half, only four for the Flyers. Mike, shutter jump. Backdoor cut. That doesn't happen if he doesn't make the hard sell out on the perimeter and then going backdoor. He could have gotten a foul in that. He did absorb some contact. 90 seconds left. Both teams have lost twice. Third game in three days. Who's got enough left in the tank to pull out their only win? This is Hall in the paint, fouled. Yeah, Anthony Grant is screaming three in the key. Third foul on Sharif jumps. BYU has free throws and it's Dallin Hall. Boy, that is a very frustrated Dayton bench right now. Yeah, I think there's a lot of Pent up emotions that are coming out right now after a large lead has disappeared. Yet the good news is it still has one. It's a one-point game. 
Dayton's looking to try to pull off their first road win. They don't have one away from home yet this season. Paul missed them both. Bodies tumble. That's a foul on Holmes. Oh, no, take it back. That's on BYU. They called that. No, that was on Holmes. They did call that on Holmes. I think both coaches reacted unfavorably. I think they both were under the impression one of their players had been whistled for the foul. Now, Holmes is boxing out here. A tough one on Holmes. Now, Anthony Grant just got warned that he's got to stay behind the coach's box line. First on Holmes. Stays here. Boy, this is this game has gone a little wild and chaotic in the final sequence. 114 to go. That's it. A look for him and then Robinson and Gideon George on the perimeter. Tough place to inbound. The EYU works it in. Treore not looking for his shot. George has had the hot hand in the second half. Right hand dribble inside layup. No, but a foul. And Gideon George has a chance to give his team a lead. Off the ball screen from the top. Gideon George now just getting downhill. Play, making plays, going after a win. Blakeney makes him earn it the hard way. Misses the front end. Saunders coming back in for Hall. Mark Pope did a little offense for defense. Tie game. 64 all. 60 seconds left. Back to Holmes. Soto Jump has got to be involved in the offense. He's floating, Holmes surveying. Traore pushes him all the way out. Eight to shoot. Holmes getting ready to make his move. Poked free. Williams has it. A blur to the rack. No. Rebound down to Malachi Smith. Tie game. Less than 30 seconds. Anthony Grant does have a timeout. There's about a second and a half differential between shot and game clock, and Grant uses the T.O., his last. 64 all. Saunders has his back to the inbounder. That's Blakeney. Malachi Smith has got it deep in the backcourt. Here we go. Smith draining some clock. Ten seconds to go. Six on the shot clock. Smith to the rack. The long leaps. Shot was blocked. There's a timeout called after BYU retained possession. And that's Malachi Smith who's clutching his left ankle. 3.7 left. Look, BYU's lining up like a football play. Williams, two seconds, has a chance to win it at the horn. No! And overtime is coming up. BYU to it. A resilient team. And you're right, it just feels now as if BYU has the upper hand. And who would have thought that about an hour ago? So without Elvis, Smith, and Kamara, three starters for Dayton, it turns to Zimmy Wilkeji. He's logging some minutes here in overtime. And R.J. Blakeney has the first basket. And now, can Dallin Hall continue how effective he was in the second half? Whoa. He was scoring, distributing, rebounding. We haven't really seen Noah Waterman 
much in the second half. Dallin Hall has gotten a call, really going with a small lineup for BYU. George has made a big impact. Rudy Williams turns and scores. Even at 66. We had two overtime semifinals yesterday. This is the third game of this tournament to go to overtime. They've been playing this since 2011. That's the first time that's ever happened. Better believe when you come to the Battle for Atlantis, you're going to see competitive ball games. Better bring it. Blake the offline. BYU has a chance to take the lead again. It had a couple of brief leads late in the second half. Gideon oh. George split a pair of free throws to tie it up at 64. Robinson! That's good! Mark Pope has managed this game beautifully. With the weapons that BYU has from the perimeter, stay patient and composed. Holmes wide open for three. Short. Out to Blakeney and a new 20. Holmes thought all about that. So Sharif jumps. The freshman is running the point. Into the paint. Floats it. No. Williams lost it. And so Dayton gets a second chance. And it'll have 30 on the timer. Rudy Williams finds Jackson Robinson in the corner. Robinson with 11, three triples. He is the marksman. BYU was a little sped up in the first half. They have settled in and played very cool, calm, and collected. Traore whacks the pass out. Wokeji with five to shoot. Om Seal way up there on the rafters. Ball back to BYU at 250. Mark Pope with a fist in the air. Sensing that his team has now got a little momentum and a lead. Just a wretched turn of events for Dayton without three starters for overtime. BYU moving the basketball well, an unselfish team in this second half. George, two more. And George taking the simple shot. Dayton's going to allow middle penetration. BYU going to take advantage. They're leaving Holmes way open. Into the paint, floats it up, count it! And Holmes has a chance to get it back to a two-point game. He would not be denied that time. Dayton may have discovered something right there with Holmes at the top. Keeping the two guards on both wings involved. Allowing Deron Holmes to get a little NBA action with that huge step to the basket. Get the finish and get to the free throw line. As, as several BYU players were calling for a travel, he, those were just two long steps there. You could see on the replay. Williams subs in for Saunders. Now Holmes has already missed two free throws. He's six of eight from the free throw line. Well, KG battles for it. Back up. No. It's still a three-point game. Two minutes to go in overtime. Dayton in a 1-3-1 defense. You've got to be able to cover shooters, though. Anticipate where that next pass is going. Hands up. Oh, here's Robinson, bombs away, got it! Jackson Robinson has come alive! Dayton down six. One twenty-five to go, just back to Holmes. Beat it to the big man. Traore playing with four fouls, that's his fifth! And that's gonna send... Deron Holmes back to the line. So Saunders is going to check in for Traore. He has fouled out. Leaves with six points and ten rebounds. That's a huge, that's a huge loss for BYU. Moose Traore 
has really been a problem to slow down Duran Holmes inside. Now Atiki Ali Atiki will have to have that assignment. Wild game. BYU ahead by six. After once trailing by 23. Well, BYU just able to get the shots that they want. Jackson Robinson finding it, feeling it. Even a step back, draining the three. Four triples for Robinson. He has hit some timely threes this week. Holmes gets one out of two. It's a five-point game. BYU ahead two scores. 120 to go. Intense backcourt pressure. Robinson gets it across. Dayton in desperate need of a stop. BYU able to use the full shot clock right now. Dallin Hall, the freshman point guard, has had a fantastic game. Williams offline. They got to go. 54 seconds. Five-point game. Whatever look it gets, it just needs one. It needs possessions. To Holmes. Now he's going to go to work on Ali Atiki. Hoist it up, and no chance. That was a wild layup that time. Off of Dayton. Ball back to BYU. Now, and Anthony Grant says, let's take a peek. They can do that because we're inside of one minute. And Up ahead, 32 seconds. BYU is going to work a lot of clock. And you now you foul. need to foul. Yeah, yeah you, you have foul. to. You have to do it. Probably about 10 seconds came off. 10 too many. And Holmes sends the Cougars to the line. But this one is starting to feel like a feel-good BYU comeback. 21 points away from officially winning. Dayton was up in the first half. 32 to 9. BYU adjusted to playing without Spencer Johnson. Key contributions from deeper in the roster. That makes it a three possession game. Sharam jumps. Got it. That's huge. 15.6. He got a foul immediately. Right away. Oh, now Blake, he got his hands on it. Stops the clock with 13.6. So it's still a two possession game and lead, even if Rudy Williams hits both. Anthony Grant, only thing left to do, but. Wonder how this one got away. Shot selections was a big part of it. Missing shots and then breakdowns defensively. BYU never got out of system. They continued to play the way that they do. In penetrating in, playing four out, able to knock down shots. They hit 13 threes. So you need the three here immediately. Can't waste time looking for something. Oh, Sharif jumps, falls. Seven seconds. Sam um, Seal's got to let it fly. Oh, with four seconds left. Okay. Got a foul. George is going to the line. 3.3 left. And at this point, just one, in essence, might do it. Yeah, that'll be tough. <laughs> Now, Gideon George is sitting on 20. You know, if he makes the first, this is one of those scenarios where you, you miss the second. Well, okay, now you got to make the second. Right. <laughs> this is important Take now. the strategy out of it. Now, just make this. This is huge. No timeouts. Yeah, there it is. 3.3 left. Pardon me. Dayton did have one timeout, so it uses it. But, boy... Save for a foul on the were just on their heels for much of the second half. Off seal, the heave. George swipes it. And BYU comes all the way back. A miraculous turnaround. 
and it's going to leave the Bahamas with a win. Never hung their heads, BYU. Never thought that this game was out of...